taking you on a tour of the anvils of Douglas County. Now, I don't know what it's like in your county, but something tells me that Douglas County, Oregon is the most well-endowed anvil county anywhere around. I'm aware of several really, really nice anvils, a couple of them almost without peer, as far as I can tell. If it turns out that I'm not right on this, let me know. Send me a picture. Bring me up to speed. But I'm going to show you some anvils you're never going to forget. So we're in Jeff Lindenmeyer's shop this morning in the south part of Douglas County. This is the anvil that he works on. This is a 350 pound Trenton. Nice shape, nice size. He really took a hold of blacksmithing about five years ago, built this shop. He's turned it into an anvil bird dog. If there's an anvil within 400 miles, he knows. If there's an anvil in North America that's remarkable, he knows. We're gonna show you an anvil that he has that is so unique, so unique. And he sniffed it out in Austria, which is quite a story. The anvil that you're looking at is a Mousehole Forge anvil. There's a long and noble history around Mousehole Forge. Tell us about Mousehole Forge, Jeff. Well, they started making things here at this location on this bend on a river in around 1600. They for sure started making anvils by 1700. Actually, the London pattern that we know as a, what you visualize as an anvil was credited to this Location. One of the reasons I love Jeff is because he's very calm. It's hard to get any excitement out of Jeff, okay? But what he has here is worthy of excitement. Can you see the scale of this? That is 39 and a half inches. That hardy hole is two inches square. Where are you going to go to see an anvil like that? 16 inches tall. What a chunk. Now, we, we didn't talk about the fact that this has got about a maybe a 3 16 inch belly right here in the sweet spot. Think about how much work would have to be done either to hammer down the wrought iron or to have to do enough damage that an eighth of an inch is ground away. Now that could just be a forging defect, but what a beautiful chunk this is. Now we come to the type of anvil that makes my heart palpitate. This is a hay button. This is a 247 pound hay button anvil, a very classy anvil. You can see right away that the shape is elegant. Makes everything else look just a little coarse, in my opinion. Just a beautiful anvil. Did you shell? did you work on this, I Jeff? Worked on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jeff does a nice job of bringing anvils oh, back up to man. to factory condition. Now, in its own way, this little bitty anvil is worthy of comment, almost to the same extent as some of these other ones. This is a railroad track anvil, but I have never seen one as faithfully rendered as this. Look at this. Somebody machined a bench for crying out loud. The horn is nicely, nicely shaped. They put a well-scaled hardy hole and a pritchel hole. This is an anvil. I, I, you know, ordinarily you qualify railroad track anvils by saying railroad track anvils. This is an anvil. What does that weigh? 25 pounds, Jeff, you think? Let's go to the next spot. There's some other anvils you're gonna wanna see. How we doing, man? Oh, we're doing good. Good. Thanks for letting us come over. Oh, man. <laughs> Glad to have you. So, we're at Ken Jordan's place today. Now, you've seen Ken in other videos. He's a good friend of mine. I've known. How long have we known each other, Kenny? Ten years, I ten, guess. Ten or eleven years. You're going to get a little look at what's going on at his place today. There's a lot going on at his place. So, this is a modern anvil, and it... So, this is a hard lesson for people like me. There are people like me who are blessed with... Uh, antique forged anvils, big ones, and we tend to think that uh, nothing can approach that, right? Not technically true. So this anvil has been cast recently, like within the last 10 years. Ken bought it probably within 12 months of it being cast. Modern cast steel anvils are just as durable, just as useful, just as bulletproof as any hand-forged antique anvil. Not always been that way, but that's the way it is now. In addition, they're new, they're smooth, they're sharp. So obviously this is not a London pattern anvil, like the ones in my shop, like the ones in Jeff's shop. This is a European pattern anvil with a couple specific adaptations. By European pattern, typically we mean it has a horn on one end and a tapered heel. Okay, that's kind of neat, a, a, a diminishing width 
on a smooth face, pretty handy. It has a couple other features. It has this additional little um, kind of a clip on the side, similar to what uh, Farrier's anvils used to have. You can get around that with a narrow piece. It's another little square, thin heel that can be accessed. It's got this upsetting block. An upsetting block in a position like this is something for beating on to upset the end of a bar without worrying about marring your working surface. You could also do some chisel work on there and not be worried about marring what is essentially a pristine surface. Ken, you got to put a couple marks on here. It just needs a little bit of wear, man. But this is a beautiful anvil, 470 pounds, solid. Look at the, these evoke what used to be called church windows in forged anvils. It's just a nice kind of an Art Nouveau look. This is an anvil you could covet, even though it's not an antique, but it's a beauty. So Ken is a man who likes to take care of his tools, okay? So look at this aluminum plate goes on here. Just on the off chance that anything that was going to be done here would actually leave a mark, we put this on to protect it. I get that. It's not me, okay, but I get that. Kenny made this because since this anvil doesn't have a bench or a cutting plate for rough work and chisel work, he's got this that he can drop on here and do rough work without, without marring his table. So just for the record, this is an example that when those of us with antique anvils start crowing about the superiority of an old tool, you can't beat a tool like this. It's perfect. It's useful. It just doesn't happen to be old. So the lesson here is, if you're discouraged because you haven't been able to find an anvil and you've been watching Craigslist and you've been talking to everybody you know and you just can't find an anvil and you're tired of waiting and you want to start blacksmithing, you can buy a new one. There are new anvils for sale that work perfectly, that will be everything you want. You can always watch for the antique, but in the meantime, you can find an anvil brand new that will put you into the craft and so you can start adding that to your skill set and getting the satisfaction that comes from forging iron. So I've got a soft spot in my heart for an anvil like this. Once again, Hey Budden, manufacturing company, Brooklyn, New York the premier domestic anvil manufacturer in my ever humble opinion. 155 pounds, nice shape. The edges are good. I mean this near edge is near perfect. Far edge is plenty good. Got a little fuller in there. Very little evidence of use. You can see the forging marks. You can see where the wrought iron was built up. Big forge weld in the waist. Tool steel all the way up. Nice, nice, really anvil. nice anvil. Really nice little anvil. Yeah, really, really nice. What's this, Ken? Um, I can't remember. Well, let's find out. Yep, Peter Wright, a very good English anvil. Do you remember we got a hundred weight, stone weight? A uh, hundred fifty-five is it? Uh, About another hundred and fifty-five pounder. I think so. So yeah. this little shelf right there on the feet is fairly characteristic of Peter Wright. It's not always accurate, but often you see that little flat shelf on the feet, you probably got a Peter Wright. Nice little anvil. That back edge would need to be built up for my taste, but uh, it's a good one. 